staring into the sun again. I'll, wa I'll walk over here, hang on. Um, today we're going to um, rip the head off the 620 here because it's got a uh, blown head gasket and uh, milky milkshake uh, in the sump. Now, um, first thing I'm going to do is drop the water out of it. Um, usually you would um, put this in, into a container and uh, dispose of it, but this is just it's just straight water in it at the moment, so I'm just going to drop it out on the ground and water my lawn. Weeds, whatever they are. Um, so I'm going to do that now, and then I'll back it back in the shed again, and we'll start tearing it apart. Sorry guys, my, my thumb hit the uh, stop recording button while I was uh, performing the procedure. What I just did was I um, undid this hose clamp at the bottom and I removed it from the radiator let, let the water out and I took the cap off so it, um, it would all come out. Um, I'm going to give it a maybe a quick pressure clean, a uh, quick degrease before I back it back in the shed as well and uh, clean the engine up so I don't get so dirty hands. So next on the list I'm going to um, disconnect the, uh, what are they called? Accelerator cable and choke cable. And then we're going to take the manifolds off and lean it over. Um, take the spark plug leads off and all that stuff. And then we'll un um, take the rocker cover off, undo all the head bolts, and then it should all lift off. removed um, now this is going to be sticky and hard to get off so I'm gonna free it up to a stage where I can lift it off and then we'll both we'll all lift it off together these heads are stubborn because the head studs like to stay in the block and they're not aluminium they're iron so they're heavy but I'm getting it there 
Almost. Oh. It's stuck. Try again. Sorry about my grunting. Better come up evenly. Okay. And there we have it. I think I've got to. Without cleaning it up, what I'm thinking is there's a pile of crud just here. Now, I don't think there's a water jacket hole because there's not one there and there. What I think's happened is it's been leaking it through here and it's piled up because there is a hole in the gasket, which is this, and that's where the crud was building up. So what I'm thinking is it was leaking through the center there from the actual water jacket there through here and leaking into the cylinders. Um, I caught it pretty early, so it hasn't done too much, but uh, yeah, the back one doesn't look too healthy either. But um, Yeah, that's just, uh, you know, it's been sitting around for a long time and, and yeah, then I decided to use it. And uh, of course it's just pushing water through the gasket. So I, I've checked the valves. What you do is um, you pour kerosene or uh, carby cleaner down the valve ports. And if the valves are no good, it'll leak around the valve seats. Um, there is, I don't know if you can see in there. No, you can't. Um, I almost used the full can of uh, carburetor cleaner and there is no leaks so i'm not going to worry about getting the valves done uh, this motor is only temporary so there's budget i'm not going to go full fussy spec on it um i'm just going to get the take it in and get the head refaced and uh, then we'll put it back on now i should um usually you would get new head bolts but as I said this is just a temporary motor so I'm not going to waste my money on new head bolts I'm just going to use the original ones um, yeah so budget all right I got to a stage where um, it's ready for the head to go back on I will still have to take it to the machinist and get them to resurface it but um, I clean the um, block deck up with a combination of my uh, scraper, my vacuum cleaner, vacuum cleaner and a bit of uh, thinners and it's come up pretty good. It's, uh, um, it's cleaner than the last J15 I pulled apart anyway. Um, I just uh, scuffed that piston up a bit to see how deep the uh, carbon was. It's not too bad. Uh, I might even clean it off yet, but uh, yeah, so I'll be uh, taking the head to the machinist Thursday, um, and then uh, it's not much to put it all back together after that. I'm going to take the valve stem seals out of the last head that I changed because that basically did no kilometers after I put the valve uh, uh, head back on because it stripped out a head bolt um, so I'm going to pull that motor apart and take those valve stem seals out and I'm going to put it in the um, current head so I might do that now you don't have to watch it's a chilly cold Friday morning and I got my head back so let's go open up the shed and have a look. Sun's just starting to poke its head up over the uh, top of the trees there, which is good because it's going to warm me up because I can't feel my fingers. 
Um, yeah, so I just got the head surfaced um, just to clean all the crap off and make sure it's flat. Um, so now I'm going to um, give it a bit of a clean up with some thinners to make sure all the oil's off it. And I'll do the same with the deck, another wipe over. And I'll oh, stick it back on. Fun and games. One problem with uh, cast iron heads is they're heavy. Trying to line up bolt holes. Where are we? Am I in the right spot? No, I'm not. There. You notice I put the gasket on first. Drastic if you forget to put the gasket on. Okay, that's sitting there. I'm going to clean up all the threads. I might even um, put bolts. I've got to put a bit of grease on them just so they uh, slide better for when you take a torque reading. You've got to um, get a true reading. But I'm going to clean them up a bit first. Make sure that they're gonna screw on properly, properly, properly. A good thing to do is lay out everything you took off the motor when you pulled it apart so you know what you've got. I've laid it out on my makeshift workbench because my shed is too full. I've got too much crap. I've got to get rid of some. Anyway, yes. Um, I've got to put the um, push rods in and then the uh, valve train and then all the nuts and bolts. Torque them all up and we're done. I miss my little 620. I want to drive it. So these push rods, they sit on your lifters, which are down in these holes here. Got to get, make sure you get them seated in the lifter when you put them in. Uh, the lifter um, sits on top of the cam and it lifts these push rods up and down, which in turn, come over here, sits underneath these arms and it pushes these arms up and down like that. The other end of that arm sits on top of the valve and opens and shuts the valve. And that's how your valve train works. As I was saying, the uh, push rod here comes up underneath this arm. And the other side of the arm sits on top of the valve stem. and rocks backwards and forwards on the cam and opens and shuts the valve. We'll go through adjusting these uh, valves afterwards, the valve clearances. For now, we'll get it all torqued down. Okay, we're gonna torque the head bolts down. Um, Google tells me it's between 50 and 60 Newton meters of torque. Now, I've already gone around and done it once at uh, 30 Newton meters of torque, just to get them sort of even. Um, now I'm set at 58 Newton meters of torque, because that's a good round number. And um, what you do is you zigzag across from inside out. So you set your torque wrench to what you want it to. And then you turn it until it clicks like that. And that's that. That's that one. I'm going to do this one. Now last time I did this, I stripped out a head bolt in the engine. That's why I was a bit reluctant to do it on this motor, but this motor seems like it's a lot better. 
there's a lot less corrosion in the uh, in the motor. I better stop talking, otherwise I'm going to forget where I am. I think it was back here. Right, so um, the valve clearance for these motors, for the J15 Datsun motor, can't see that. It's 35, it's 35 millimeters, you can take my word for it. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna slip it in here and it's got to have just a slight bit of resistance. That one's got no resistance. It's got, yeah, I can move that around in there. So that's definitely too loose. Now what you do is you get a screwdriver in here and a spanner on there. And while you're holding that with a screwdriver, you loosen the nut off and then you turn the screwdriver to adjust the valve up and down Okay, so we're going to do number one. So you put the screwdriver in the top and then you loosen off the nut. Once the nut's loose, you can turn the screwdriver. Take that off. So you've got clockwise to tighten, anti-clockwise to loosen. Now you want it so there's just just a fraction of drag. It's too much. There we go, right there. And then you tighten it back down without moving the screw. Go over tight because I'm going to do it again when I'm when it's hot. Okay, that's good. So next we're going to remember the rule of nine. Seven and two make nine. So we've got to get number seven valve fully open, and then we've got to adjust number two. So. We're going to turn the motor clockwise until number seven valve is fully open. And that would be there. Now we can adjust number number two. Number two is still way too loose. So you get the idea. I'm gonna repeat that process until they're all done. And then um, I'm gonna put the rest of the car back together and start it up and get it hot and then I'll adjust them again. As you can see, the head gasket is done. Um, the only problem is The problem would be I have a blown out uh, exhaust manifold gasket, so I have to order one of those, and I will um, I won't see that till next week. So no more no driving of the uh, Ute this weekend. So that's enough 620 for today. I'm gonna wait till I got the manifold gasket. I'll put that in, and then I can. Uh, get it hot and readjust the um, valve clearances and then it's all set on the road again. Okay, that's it for now. I'll um, see you next round.